Hey everyone, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. My name is Scary Spikes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Drake Venture. I mean, Vulture. Yeah, this one. Definitely this one. Drake Vulture is a single-seater solo salvage ship, that's a mouthful, being released in Star Citizen Alpha 318, currently in PTU. My goal here is to show you a little bit more about the ship and help you to decide whether it's the right one for you, as it's the first ship in a very long time to open up a brand new path in a career that you might very well be interested in. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you've played EVE Online, you're no doubt drawing some parallels from this ship to the Venture in that game. And while you'd be right, and both of those ships at a distance at least look very similar to one another, there are certainly some differences. And as far as unique ships go in Star Citizen, this one here definitely takes the cake in terms of being unique compared to some of the other ships available in the game, as well as being very unique in the operations that it is able to perform, as this ship is again introducing a brand new career path for pilots interested in getting into solo salvage operations. Now, while this is a simple ship, there's definitely a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and start with a nice exterior tour, talk about all the tools at your disposal, and then we'll head inside and see what that's all about. The main attraction, of course, on this particular vessel is going to be its two gigantic crab claws, I mean, salvage arms, and they're going to have a number of tools in each one to help you do the job. In each of these arms, we have a pair of tools. One is going to be a cinch module, and the other one is going to be an abrade module. The big difference between the cinch and the abrade module is that one of them is going to have a much thicker beam, allowing for a quicker collection of salvage, but at a reduced efficiency, whereas the other beam is going to have a much narrower beam, and it's going to be a lot slower. However, it's going to be a lot more efficient, being able to get a lot more material off the surface of a particular vessel. Now, it's important to note that you have both modules in each arm, so you're going to have to choose which module you want to use, and you're going to be using both modules at the same time, one in each arm. The ship does also come with a tractor beam, which is going to make work in the future when tractor beams come online a lot more efficient and easy, especially for somebody running solo operations, but at the moment, that's not yet available. Now, while you can enter the ship from the rear, giggity, you do have a nice little ladder here on the port side of the ship that leads up to a catwalk, which allows you to enter through a cab door, also on the port side of the ship, to get into the cockpit easily. Now, while it remains to be seen whether that little door is going to do enough to keep the smell of burnt steak outside of the interior of the cockpit, it does seem to work for Star Citizen's purposes, and at the end of the day, I think that's all we really need. Working as a salvage operator on the Vulture is definitely not an easy task, especially in the dark depths of space, and so you're going to need to have ample light in order to see exactly what you're doing. Thankfully, we've got a nice set of lights here from Drake, with four all around the cockpit and one on each of the crab claws, you'll be able to see everything just fine. Now, I don't imagine that you'll be doing too much dogfighting in your new Vulture, but if you happen to get into some trouble with a smaller ship, then you should be able to defend yourself with two CF-117 laser repeaters, one located on either side of your cockpit. As far as landing gear is concerned, we do have two in the front and two in the rear, and they do stow away nicely and neatly into the body of the ship when not in use. Speaking of stowing things away, we do have some integral VTOL thrusters. Surprise, surprise, it's a Drake ship. And if you press K or a Kilo on your keyboard, you got these little thrusters that pop out from the bottom, as well as these little top covers here that open up to expose a little vent. And then, of course, you can just press that button again to close them up and get them out of the way until needed once again. And as with most Drake ships, we are going to have a nice big pair of thrusters on the back here as well. We have one on the port side of the ship and another on the starboard side, which will accelerate us to a fairly comfortable 1100 meters per second, which is really not bad for a ship of this size. Now, albeit these thrusters don't articulate to create pseudo VTOL thrusters like we see on other Drake ships, but that's okay, you don't really need it, and honestly, you can just get by without them, especially since you do have some built-in VTOL thrusters that do the job quite adequately. Now, around the back of the ship, we do have the main ingress point, which is going to be our cargo ramp. And what I like to see is, I think, one of the things that I mentioned in my previous video, and that's having a button on either side of the door to be able to access this no matter which side you approach your ship from. Now, this ramp opens up quite nicely, and uh, I really quite like the way that it's designed. It's quite compact, but it definitely serves a purpose. We've got some nice rails on the side as well there for some added safety when you're on the ground. 
Let's go ahead and step inside and take an interior tour. Now, unfortunately, the interior is not going to be as flashy and impressive as the exterior. Nevertheless, it's just as important, if not more. Let's go ahead and have a look starting at the cargo area. Now, unfortunately, as cool as this ship is, the cargo area definitely leaves something to be desired, with a total of 12 SCU being the capacity of things that you can either haul around or just carry on board. What's nice is that this is an asymmetric design, which does allow for you to be able to pass on the starboard end of the ship to get to other areas of the vessel. We do have a little machine here in the back. This is essentially a baler that automatically bails all of your recycled material salvage from other ships into convenient little 1 SCU containers, which will then store automatically here. The downside, of course, to this is that after two containers, you're going to have to come down here and physically move them. And this is why I said earlier in the video that having one of these is definitely going to be very helpful. Make sure to pick one up before you go and start salvaging. That being said, you can also come up to the terminal here, which will allow you to make certain little tools that will help you with your job. This is a really cool addition, and I'm really looking forward to starting to use this in the future. Moving through the door here, we can see that we have a nice little ladder. We can go ahead and climb up this ladder just by simply walking into it. The lighting in the ship is definitely very atmospheric and makes it feel very unique. Of course, it's very Drake-like. Now, as soon as we get up the ladder here, we have a couple of compartments. We have really nothing to speak of behind us here. This just looks like a, maybe a stack of computers or something along those lines. We do have a nice, bright, warm light, as we expect from most Drake ships. And then over here, we do have the quantum drive. So you can go ahead and just press this button here to open this up. We do have a little gun storage area here. Not that you're going to be doing a lot of gunfighting with your Vulture. But it's definitely nice to have, especially in the future if you want to protect yourself from getting boarded. You do have some space for what looks like three pistols up top, potentially, and a couple of rifles down below that, as well as some storage for ammunition or miscellaneous items. Right beside that, we do have a nice suit storage locker. I'm not sure if this is fully functional at the moment, but it does open up very nicely in a nice space-saving design. And it looks like you'll be able to store at least one or two suits in here with a nice little shelf on the top for extras. Moving further into the vessel here, we arrive at the very cramped and industrial looking crew quarters or the crew rest area. Now, of course, this is going to be a solo ship, so we're not going to be able to expect too much here. But let's go ahead and start on the port side of the ship. On the port side, we do have access to a battery as well as what looks like a gravity generator. In the middle, I'm not really quite sure what this is. It did kind of look a little bit like a range or something along those lines, but... On closer inspection, it looks like it could be some kind of maybe repair station. The rest of the wall here is basically covered with a number of different components. We have coolers on the top and on the bottom here, we have some power plants. And of course, you can play with these buttons to open all of these up and close them back up. Unfortunately, there is not too much that we can do with this right now. So let's go ahead and move on. Before we head into the cockpit, let's check out the very limited looking bed here. There's obviously not a whole lot going on here. It's a very no-frills approach, as we've seen from Drake in the past, with just a very basic light above the bed, and of course, wiring everywhere, because that is totally not a fire hazard. We've got a nice little shower here with a pull-out toilet, which you can simply just click on there, and that's going to allow you to have a seat and do your daily reading. Once you're done, you can simply close this up, and you're good to move on with your day. All right, so moving on to the final area, is it's going to be the cockpit here, of course. It is a fairly cramped cockpit as well, but again, this is nothing new because this ship is designed just for one person. On the left-hand side, the port side here, we do have access to a computer and nothing really else underneath, which kind of seems like a little bit of a wasted space. And on the right-hand side here, the starboard side, we do have what looks like maybe some power panels and stuff like that on the back end of this. And then we do have our scanner and radar arrays in here as well. Now, unlike on the other side, we can open these up and kind of get a physicalized look at them. And they do look pretty cool, but I'm sure this is still early days and I'm sure they will look a little bit different going forward. All right, finally, turning our attention on the captain's seat here, we can access the seat in a number of different ways. We can access it, of course, by using our F button and sitting down this way. But we do also, of course, have the door, which we can open from the side and exit through onto the catwalk outside the ship this way. This is kind of nice. It's always nice to have different ways to ingress and egress out of your ship. And certainly this is something I'm very happy with. It makes me kind of feel like I'm standing on one of those gigantic tractors with catwalks all over it. I think that was the intent and it definitely comes across really nicely here. Now, stepping back inside, we can certainly close the door as usual. But I found what's really cool is that you can actually enter the pilot seat directly from outside. Simply just hold your F button and click on enter pilot seat. 
and the arm will swivel out of the way and it will turn to face you, allowing you to sit down. Then you're pretty much sitting in your seat and you are good to go and the door will close automatically behind you. Looking at this system here, it looks like it's a HOSAS system, so a pair of joysticks with our rudder pedals down below, and then we do have some buttons on either side. It doesn't seem like there are many buttons that you can push here, in fact it doesn't look like any of them are interactable. On the left hand side, there's a slightly different story. We do have the old system that I've complained about quite a lot, but certainly nice to be able to push the buttons nonetheless. As for MFDs, we have one on the top left, we have one on the top right. Just a little bit off center is our 2D radar and to the left of that is our annunciator panel. Right above that, we have a little cockpit light and then just below we have an MFD on our left and our right side. Other than that, the visibility of the cockpit is pretty good. It's not as good as some other ships out there, but certainly this is going to be more than good enough to get the job done. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. And if you did, you can help me out in a big way by just remembering to like the video and share it with your friends and become a subscriber with notifications turned on if you have not done so yet as I post videos weekly. If you'd like to help support me even further, then you can become a channel member right here on YouTube by clicking the blue join button down below or following the link in the description to my Patreon page where I have recently revamped all the prices and some of the perks and benefits available to you and it's now more accessible than ever to help support the channel if you found these videos helpful. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.